But today we'll actually cover all the way through verse 27. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. And we're so glad to have Pastor Tolbert with us today from Daniel Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Gave us a wonderful surprise. Always good to have fellowship with brother. Always, always good. All service day, isn't that something? Oh, I want to enjoy talking about that. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 14. Amen? Amen. Will you now rest on your feet for the reading of God's word? From the New King James Version of the Bible, the word of God reads, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Let us pray together. Gracious God, thank you so much for calling us out of darkness into a marvelous light, out of our sin nature into a relationship with you bringing us into your family, making us a part of your body. We just want to say thank you. Today, Father, as we celebrate those who serve in your house, I pray, Lord, that they will be encouraged to continue to serve, that they will not become weary in their well-doing, and that, God, they will understand that in due season they will reap if they faint not. So, God, as always, we ask very kindly that you would allow your spirit to work through me for your glory. That this body of Christ will be edified, and you, Holy Father, will be glorified. Encourage us today, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We give God thanks and praise for our praise team and inspirational choir. Their service is always appreciated. And also for our ushers, we thank you this morning for your service. And today, going to continue with now, let the journey begin. This series of sermons is designed for us to explore the journey God has us on in our faith. And we need to know because of what Jesus has done for us. We've celebrated Easter and Jesus, we've celebrated his death, his burial, and most importantly, his resurrection. What is our response? What is our vision? What is our journey? You know, our vision, when we talk about it from time to time, and it's there on the screen, we are a church that we, you know, we love God, we love others, and love the world. Come on, say that with me. Love God, <laughs> love others, love the world. That's, that's, our, that's what we see. That's, that's what we see God having us do. Our purpose is, you know, the, the, the why we do. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we need to understand that now that we've come into a relationship with God, there's a journey, a journey of faith that we must all take. Last week, we began talking about the beginning of that journey, and we talked about how, you know, it was time for us right now to receive God's salvation. Mm -hmm. We need to receive his grace, you know. Don't take the grace of the Lord God in vain. And we need to receive his help by going back to the manufacturer. If things are broken in your life, go back to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. He's the one who can fix things. Yes. And then we talked about uh, receiving his salvation. And we explained to you how, you know, with, with the Affordable Care Act, there is an open enrollment period. And now because of Jesus Christ coming and dying for us, there is an open enrollment period for heaven. Anybody who wants to get saved can get saved. But that, that enrollment ends when either A, he comes back, or B, you, you leave this world. And hopefully we've all enrolled before we leave. Amen? Today, today we're going to talk about now we are the body, body of Christ. Now we are the body of Christ. And I want to share three things with you. The first is, now we are the body. The second is, now we support the body. And the third is, now we serve the body. 
Now we are the body. Now we support the body. And now we serve the body. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to the scriptures. Let's look at verses 13 and 14. It says, For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body, of, the, in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Let me ask the question, and you don't, don't answer this out loud, but who are you? <laughs> really, who, who are you? How do you describe yourself? How do you define who you are as a person? When you, when you meet a complete stranger, you know, some of us have traveled in wrong places and we've met people that are just completely foreign to us, complete strangers, how do you tell them your identity? Because the truth is, a lot of us wear a lot of hats. And who we are might depend on what circumstance we're in. I, I brought some hats with me today because I wanted you to see some things, and maybe these hats will help you understand a little bit better about, about who I am. And I had to go a big old bag and put my hat on. And I've got this, this first hat here. This is a visor, and uh, this, is, this is my golf hat. When I go play golf, I like to have on a visor instead of a cap because this is a part of who I am. I'm a person who likes to play golf. Um, I also have this hat, and this hat is my vacation hat. It says Universal Studios on it. I like to go travel and have a good time and be with my family. That's my, that's my remainder going on vacation hat. Okay, that's, that's, that's what that hat is. I've got another hat here. This hat is, it was given to me by a friend, Dean Chisholm. And this represents, you know, the friends that I have that I, I'm a friend to a lot of folks, so I, that's, that's, who, that's who I am. I've got another hat here. Oh, yeah, you're going to like this one. That's, that's my ski hat. And I go skiing every once in a while when I get a chance. And y'all better watch out, boy, because when the black avalanche come down the mountain, <laughs> it, might, it might tear you up. <laughs> so that's my ski hat. Um, let's see. I've got a, oh yeah, this hat. This hat is 22 years old. This is my happy hat. I got this hat in 1992 and I've kept it ever since then. And it reminds me of my, my time in college. I'm a college grad, so this is my hat. And uh, I keep this hat. I don't let anybody else in the family even touch it. They, I've been trying to find them one of their own. They ask me, can I wear your happy hat? I'm like, nope, it's not happy. Because this is mine. That, that might represent me being a bit selfish, too, but that's, that's my happy hat. Um, wait, I got this hat. I have a bicycle, y'all, and I do ride it. I will get out. Sometimes my wife and I, we will go ride our bikes. So this is, you know, the, the, the outdoor part of me. That's, that's a part of who I am. I could use that to kind of describe me. Oh, wait, how about this one? Bet you didn't know I had one of these. I got a fez. <laughs> I got a fez for Christmas, y'all. And uh, my fez, and I have actually worn this to Walmart. And, and I, started to, I started to turn it upside down to see if I could get a donation. <laughs> but that's my fez. And, and the fez is, there's a, there's a science fiction TV show called Doctor Who, and one of the doctors wears a fez. And I, I like to watch science fiction movies, so this is a part of who I am. This represents that part of my life. Um, I got another hat in here. That's my preacher hat right there, but whenever, whenever I put this hat on, no matter what's going on, the first thing out of faith will read now is, boy, you look like a preacher today. <laughs> I can be wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. And she's like, ooh, you gonna go somewhere and play basketball with the preachers? I mean, that's, that's my preacher hat. Um, all, all of these hats uh, represent kind of who I am as a person. And, and the truth is they, they define me to a certain degree. But there's one hat I don't really have physically that I can hold, but it represents me better than any other. It's the crown of life. Yes. 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 It's the crown of life. Yeah. I'm saved. Yeah. And I'm in God's kingdom. Yeah. I'm a child of the king. Yes. 
And if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are a child of the King as well. All right. We all have that in common. Yeah. Because now, now, we are the body of Christ. Yeah. And see, when, when Paul was writing this, this letter to the church at Corinth, he was writing to a group of people who had an identity crisis. Because Corinth was a port city that brought in people from all over the world. Now, any given day in Corinth, you saw people uh, who, had, came, who came from different races. You saw people who came from different nationalities, different cultures, different backgrounds, different habits, things they liked to do. Also, there were various religions all through Corinth. And Paul is writing to them, he's saying, look, I know where you came from. I know who you think you are and where you have been and who you have been, but the truth is now, yeah. now, we are one body in Jesus Christ. Right, right. Paul tells this church that, that by one spirit, by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We all have the same collective identity. No, it doesn't matter who you are, when I look at you, when I see you, when I talk to you, I have to remember, that's my brother. That's my sister. That's somebody who's in the body, and they're a part of me, and I'm a part of them. Now that I'm a believer, I'm not just out there by myself, me and all of my hats. I have some people who all sit in here that have the same hat I have. Yeah. They all have a crown of life yeah. because they're children of the Most High God. Yeah. We, we, are the body yes. of Christ. Yes. Though we may be individuals, all together, all together, collectively, right. we are one body. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, secondly, we, now we support the body. Look at verse 22. Let's go down to verses 22 and, and 23. We're actually going to read a couple past that. But let's start at 22. Paul's continuing to talk about this body of Christ. And, and Paul says, no, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. Continuing on, he says, but, but our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part, part which lacks it. Paul talks about this analogy of the body of Christ, that this, this body, this human body, is representative of the church. And in doing so, he points out, watch this, that there are some parts of the body that are not supposed to be seen. Did you hear that? We, we all have some unpresentable parts, some parts that are not supposed to be seen. And let me pause here. Let me pause here and, and talk about an issue very briefly. Uh, I've never talked about it before because everybody else, I, I don't know, I just never felt led, but today I do. Let me talk about this just a little bit. Some of our younger folks are having difficulty with the older generation because the older generations are looking at the younger generations and asking, why do you dress like that? Amen. Why are you wearing what you're wearing? What, what is wrong with your dress code compared to the dress code that we have? You see, over the years, our social interaction and our fashion trends have actually put our unpresentable parts of our bodies in the spotlight, Amen. which they should not be, because there are just some parts of our body that are unpresentable. Amen. So, you know, you'll see things happening like this is, in, this is a McDonald's in Houston, Texas, that says, pull your pants up or don't come in. Um, you know, because they, they, you know, in Montgomery, they have this law about, you know, sagging pants. Well, his, what's the big deal with sagging pants? Well, look, I'm going to tell you something right now. Blame it on my generation. It was my generation when Levi's and all the other jeans companies decided to not just sell plain jeans anymore. And they started selling different fits. Amen. And one of the fits they started selling was the loose fit. And it got so serious with me, I know, that whenever I went to go buy jeans, I would always go to the Levi's store just so that I could get their loose fit jeans, and they would be nice and baggy and roomy, and I didn't feel like I was wearing tight jeans. <laughs> so uh, we, we started wearing those baggy jeans in like the 80s and the 90s, and then the baggy jeans, I guess they lost a belt somewhere. <laughs> and they started, they started inching down. <laughs> 
That, that started with my generation. Here's the truth, though. Your, your, your unpresentable parts should not have attention called to them. And here's, and here's the thing. If you're walking around, Chief Patrick, you can back me up on this. If you caught somebody outside walking around in their boxer shorts, there's going to be some issues. Or, or somebody walking around in their underwear, there's going to be some issues. Why? Because your underwear are covering your unpresentable parts. So when somebody is wearing a pair of jeans and they're sagging so low that you see their boxes, that's a problem. Because you're showing your unpresentable parts to the world, and that's what everybody is upset about. They're upset that the older generation may not have said it this way, but the truth is they're upset because you're showing something that you should not be showing. And ladies, it's the same for you too. And I'm not talking about ladies with sagging pants, and some of them do. But some of our ladies are, are, are allowing the fashion trends to cause them to show their unpresentable parts. Amen. Or at least to put them on display. Amen. The truth is, when you walk out in public, we're not supposed to see all this. Right. And we ain't supposed to see all this. Right. But what's happening is necklines are getting shorter. So that now, well, we know you got them, but now we can see them. <laughs> and the hemlines are getting shorter. They're getting closer and closer to the unpresentable part. And, and, and that's a problem. And, and, and our older generation is wondering why is it? And, and Lord help me, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I have seen some of our young ladies today with the things they wear and they buy today. That in my mind, when I see it, the first thing that comes to my mind is what I knew growing up was. Man, those are the kind of clothes prostitutes used to wear. Because those street walking women were trying to show off what they had to entice a man to come spend some money. So when I see a teenage girl, she might be real sweet, but she's But you actually just get to come and see the end result of what they've been doing. 
they come and they work on Saturday mornings when all the rest of us are still sitting down trying to figure out what brand of breakfast cereal we're going to eat. They are here. And then the ones taking care of the flowers outside, these are things that don't necessarily need to be seen. You don't always have to see the people doing them, but they still need to get done. Did you know our trustees meet all the time? And guess what? They meet without somebody telling them to meet. I don't have to tell them to come and meet, but you know what? The things that they do are vital to the success of our church. Same thing with benevolence. Reverend Jackson does a, you see it on our finance report. You see all the information about benevolence, but you don't really understand what it entails. All of the people that he contacts, all the things that he does to help families that are having a hard time. Our deacons and our deaconess, you show up on first Sunday and it's like communion. How did it get there? That's something that was done behind the scenes. There are individuals in this church who are doing things behind the scenes. You heard about what Sister Bernadette has been doing. Just with a text message. There are some in this church who are sending out cards. Some who are making phone calls. Some who are making DVDs of the services and giving them to folks. Visiting people when they're sick. You don't need to know everything that's going on, but guess what? It still needs to happen. And we must all find our place to support the body of Christ so that the ministry of the church will be successful. As Paul said, these un, 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 how do you say, unpresentable ministries require that we exercise greater modesty. And we don't need to know every detail of how they function all the time. They may be weak but necessary. They may not be honorable, but we must bestow upon them greater honor. And as a pastor, I know that I can't do anything without these folks who are serving in these ministries that you don't see. Yes. So from, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you. Yes. Thank you to all of you who serve in those ministries because when you work, when you serve, when you're doing those things that Christ wants us to do, you're really showing the world that you're in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Moving on. Lastly, now we serve the body. Verse 24 through 27. It says, But our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given each, uh, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and members individually. The body of Christ serves itself. The body of Christ helps itself. Our eyes, just like your physical body, your eyes serve the rest of your body by helping to steer you away from danger. Because you know that when you're walking in your house in the middle of the night and the lights are off and you can't see, you will stomp your toe. But if you are, if you can see and your eyes are serving you, you know to watch out for the end table or the bed post or whatever it may be. Uh, your feet serve you by, by walking forward and getting you to the place and the things that you need. These, these are things your body will do for you. Your heart serves you by allowing you to have blood flowing through your veins and, and get oxygen to your cells. And your arms serve your body by touching and manipulating things. We, we have to realize that even in the church, the body of Christ, we must also serve one another. We must serve in, in a way that allows others to continue to move forward in the ministries God has called them to and also to grow in their faith in Jesus Christ. When you look around on Sunday morning, when you walk through the door, typically the first servant you see is the ushers. Our ushers are here. They are serving. They are, they are doing what they can to make sure we maintain the order of service. And they do it right here out in front of you so that there are some things you don't have to worry about. So we appreciate what they do in their service. Not only our ushers, but our choirs. They serve. They serve when they, when they get up and they sing. And sometimes, like today, I let them sing for hell while I was going around to greet everybody. They kept all singing anyway. And I, I realize now, I probably owe them all of all the Gatorade. <laughs> but the thing is, they serve. And, and they do some work behind the scenes, but most of their service is done right here in front of us. I don't know if you know what it's like to serve people in front of them. I heard uh, Pastor Andy Stanley describe it this way, being a pastor. 
He says, you know what? You want to get up every week without fail, deliver a 25, 30-minute sermon in front of your family and your friends and be critiqued by them. <laughs> To give, give a speech in front of your family, a 35, uh, a 20, 20 to 35 minute long uh, speech in front of your family and friends and still be critiqued by them. Boy, that's a lot of pressure, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They get the same pressure mm -hmm. because they're serving right out here in front of everybody. And as they sing and as they do what they do in the choir stand, all of you have your opinions and your things you want to say, but I'm thankful that they still continue to serve. Amen. Amen. Because they understand that this is where God has called them to be in the body of Christ. Yeah. Our praise dance team, they, they go through a lot to serve us, to give us an opportunity to be inspired yeah. by the things that they are doing. To be inspired and to be lifted up in service. And I don't know about you, but you know, when I was dancing back in the day, I didn't dance all graceful and smooth like that. You know? I don't they'd have to convert me to get me to dance on the dance team. But the fact that they're willing to do that in front of everybody, that's a great act of service that they're doing for us. And don't, don't forget our communication ministry, as Deacon Kimbrough was talking about. Our communication ministry is paid for. It is free to us. We bought that camera uh, probably more than seven years ago. That camera's been paid for. And we have an account now with YouTube that is free. We don't pay anything to have our sermons and our, our worship services put on the church website. And, and we're not paying anything for them to go on television here in town. But you know what? The gospel is moving forward. Amen. And the communication Amen. ministry is making that happen right. that people can receive the word of God. And I know that there are folks who are watching the sermons when they've been sick and they've been away. And there have been people who have, who have sent me messages who live in other states who have said, you know what? That was a good message. Thank you for sharing. So we know that ministry is going forward as we serve one another. But, but let me tell you something else. We need to recognize that our service goes beyond what we do in these four walls. Because you are part of the body of Christ. Wherever the body is is where the body serves. So it doesn't matter if you're a carpenter. You, you, you serve in the body of Christ while you're there at work. You need to treat people right. If you're a person who works in a bank, you need to treat people right. If you're, and you, need to, you need to be accountable. If you're a person who works in a grocery store, you need to treat people right. You need to be serving the world while you are wherever you are. Doesn't matter if you're, if you're, you're a police officer, a lawyer, a chef, a cook. It doesn't matter what capacity you are in, wherever you are, that's your pulpit. Amen. That's your ministry. If, if all you do every day is dig a ditch, then you dig it in the name of Jesus. Right. Right. And, and that's your ministry. That's where you serve. Yes. Whatever you do, you do it as unto the Lord. Why? Right. Because we are the body of Christ. Amen. That's who we are. Our greatest example, you know, is Jesus Christ. Jesus says to us in the scriptures, he says, you know what? The greatest among you will be your servant. And because of what Jesus did for us, he truly is the greatest servant. That Jesus served the greatest need any of us ever had. I know that we have a lot of things going on in our lives and we pray and we ask God to help us with our trials, our tribulations, and our circumstances. But the greatest need we have is salvation. The greatest need we have is to have a personal and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And he made all the necessary sacrifices Sacrificing relationships with his friends who, who walked away from him. Sacrificing his body. Sacrificing his life. So that we could all be saved. He is our example. Because at the end of it all, even after all of his sacrifice, he was still crowned with glory and honor. Amen. And he was still raised to eternal life. Amen. And I say that because on this all service day, I want every servant in this church to understand your hard work, your sacrifice has not been in vain. God has seen every ounce of time you have given up, every ounce of energy you have used. 
God has seen all the times. You sacrifice doing other things out in the world so that you can do things in the church. God has seen all the times. You reach deep into your pockets and you help somebody else in need even though you had needs of your own. God has seen all the hours you came over to the church and nobody else was here. God has seen all of the times you came and you did all of the things that you were asked to do by various ministries of the church and all the things that I asked you to do. On top of the things you were already doing, God has seen it all and you will be blessed for everything that you have done. Amen. Everything you have done for the kingdom will come back to you a hundredfold. So be encouraged. Don't become weary in your well-doing. Don't get to the point where you just decide, you know what, I served long enough, now I'm tired of church, and I'm tired of them asking me to do something. Maybe it's time for you to All just right. find another place in the church to serve, All but right. don't stop serving. Amen. Amen. Don't give up. Find that next thing that God wants you to do, and do it with all of your strength, knowing that Jesus Christ gave up all of his strength for you. God bless you. Amen. Amen.